Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Fellow citizens, following the sequence of events, Uganda seems to be at political crossroads. I'm not a servant of anybody. <laughs> Madam, I know the law. As such, Alternative Digital brings you the Interfest show with retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesuje. Let's keep on the same page on Alternative Digital. As he gives you the alternatives on the transition question, rule of law, human rights and freedom, youth inclusion in governance, economic stagnation, as he confirms. I'll be always here Saturday from 10 a.m. in the morning. Be there. Don't miss the live discussion on the Alternative Uganda, Digitalk TV Facebook pages and the Alternative Uganda YouTube channel. The Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Yes, a very well good morning to you, our viewers. You're most welcome to this show. This is Tekachi live on the Alternative Uganda Facebook page, TikTok TV Facebook page, and later on our shows is broadcasted, actually is uploaded on our YouTube channel, the Alternative Uganda. You can always follow us, like our pages, the Alternative Uganda, TikTok TV, and then you go on our Twitter, Alternative Uga, YouTube, subscribe, and also press the notification button so that when we upload any of our information you can be able to find out and see what we have been able to discuss on, uh, <coughs> on each of our programs because we have quite a number of the programs I am Katoto Msime hosting this program Tekachi where we discuss different laws and how they affect the people the common person out there the viewer out there you may be knowing or you may not be knowing to some extent it can be helpful to you to your family member to your sibling or to your friend. So don't feel sorry to share it to any other person. You share. However much we have always been talking about the unsolicited information, but this one can be helpful, so share. <laughs> the unsolicited part of it will come in later, but for now share, invite friends, invite colleagues so that they can come up and follow us and also join the discussion. On our important note, we are discussing and trying to find out the basic principles in the land laws that we have in Uganda. I'm not alone in the studios and I am gladly that we have hosted one of my colleagues, comrades, and then the land friend, Council Tumine Wills. Tumine Wills is an advocate, he's a lawyer, and he's an economist and a tax consultant. So that's how rich he is. But today he will be taking us through the basic principles in land laws, and I will give him this opportunity to say hello to our viewers. You're most welcome to the show, Tumine. Thank you, um, Council Kato Tumine. Um, good morning, viewers. I'm most humbled to be hosted by Digitalk TV this morning. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, you can talk uh, about yourself, <coughs> because my introduction may have not been that rich, but you can be able to explain yourself more than I have. So yeah, that the viewers can know who exactly is addressing them today. Yeah, thank you, Council Kato. Uh, Tumine Wills is the name, and uh, I'm a lawyer by profession as well as an economist. And I'm also involved in uh, quite a number of business-related consultancy services, as well as uh, I do shield interest in uh, tax-related uh, consultancy services. So viewers need to know that indeed uh, I keep on searching for knowledge, uh, skills, and uh, competence-related uh, uh, aspects which can make one a better person in as far as uh, tackling the issues at hand in our society mm. are concerned. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is our guest today on our program, Tekachi. This is 
a show that you have done for quite a long time and we discuss, bring people to discuss different views in the different sections of the roads, different parts of the road. And today we are discussing the land road. This is a very rich area that has been disturbing so many people where they have had a lot of issues. <coughs> Either they know or they are cheated when they don't know. Or at some point, there are a few things they miss out while dealing with the land. To me, uh, I don't know if you speak some bits of Uganda, because it would be well, whatever <laughs> more Uganda or Tono Tono, where okay. possible. <laughs> and and if, it, <laughs> if it's not okay, you can go on and you know, explain in English. Exactly. But there is one principle in law that talks about he owns land, eh? the surface, owns the airspace and everything that is on land. Stand Kirao. We're talking about Kutaka. What exactly are we talking about? Land. Yeah, thank you. Uh, basically, land is, of course, uh, uh, land is an item that surely is extremely broad in as far as the de definition is concerned. Okay. And uh, to the inquiry that you're making, he who owns the land, the reality is on the land uh, above, underneath, and uh, everything on the surface that uh, uh, is on that particular land. Impliedly, if somebody has built a house mm. on land which is not his, then it literally means that uh, a new yes. belongs to the person who owns the land because yeah. the house becomes part of the, part land. Of the land. That's exactly what that it means, basically. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm. Yeah. At least our viewers can be mm. able to know. At least when we talk about land, that is what we mean. Mm. Person who owns the surface owns underneath a Biawansi Wetaka, Nebili Wagulu. Absolutely. Wetaka. However, there is a, a limitation. Mm. Because when you talk of a Taka that you own, which is above the surface, yes. it doesn't imply you will stop an aeroplane <laughs> to fly very far away off the land that you own. Because you cannot stretch and they utilize that space which is above okay. the space where the planes normally fly from. Okay. So that one needs to be taken into consideration. So that is a, a limitation. Absolutely. Principle. Absolutely. So now to me, in Uganda we have different tenure systems mm -hmm. where one can own land under the different tenures accordingly as the constitution provides so. Mm -hmm. Land tenure systems that we now in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, basically, as per the Constitution uh, mm -hmm. of uh, 1995, Article 237 uh, is to the effect of the tenure systems of land ownership in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So the viewers need to know that uh, we have four distinct uh, tenure systems in Uganda. And of which uh, they are very well spelled out and explained in Article 237 of the Constitution of 1995 as amended. And uh, the first, first one is uh, Myro land ownership. Mm. Uh, then we do have. That's uh, we're talking about Myro land. Which land falls under Myro? Yeah, land that falls under Myro is to the effect of that land which one can hold in perpetuity. So you are inclined to use it as and when you wish, and uh, best of course on the regulations uh, for the land usage. But that in the event there are minerals which are in that mineral mm. land, then the right is taken by government on behalf of the public. Take for example the oil that we are seeing in the uh, Hoima mm -hmm. side exactly, mm. whereby uh, the people or the previous owners of the land have to be compensated so that the government uses the resource in the interest of the general public at large. Yeah. Okay. So that is my land. You hold, own land in Papequita, and it's common in central, <coughs> in central region. And it is quite synonymous with the freehold land, which somebody can own uh, in uh, country places, say, for example, um, Barara, many places like Fort Potro, and many others. Mm -hmm. So what you need to know is that as well, they do have similarity because you own land in Papequita. But uh, it was preferred that uh, for the central region, it, it would be termed as my land. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we do have lease. Lease uh, is to the effect of being given a tenure, uh, for example, maybe 10 years, 20 years, 15 years, up to like 99 years of age. Okay. And that's the type of land ownership that can be attained by the, the non-citizens. Because the, the reality, exactly, like the foreigners. Because mm -hmm. the reality is the Article 237, as I've expounded on it already, is the effect of land shall be vested in the hands of the citizens. The citizens. So that is something that needs to be known exactly. Mm -hmm. Then there is another one called customary land yes. ownership. That one is very common. 
And uh, I think it carries majority of the land that we have, whereby people own land based on the customs. They do own the land based on the customs and norms of a particular uh, society or a particular community. Quite common in uh, the northern areas as well as many other regions of Uganda. Life so those are the stuff, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So now we can uh, start from there, having understood the different tenures of land ownership that we have in Uganda, the tenure systems, mm. and, and council has been able to identify them and, you know, expound them so that our viewers out there can know what we are talking about especially. Now, uh, Mr. Tumwini, the very big question now of the day is when we talk about owning land, for example, we have people who own land and they have land titles. Mm -hmm. I should say in legal terms, we, should, we say that that land was registered under the Registration of Titles Act, the RTA. Mm -hmm. And this person is interested in selling his land to Tumwini. Kato mm -hmm. owns land, he owns the title, he has it actually. And Kato is interested in selling land to Tumwini. Mm -hmm. What is required from Tumwini mm -hmm. as a person interested in buying land? Yeah, it's a in as far as attaining ownership of land is concerned, mm -hmm. that is if at all a person is interested in purchasing purchasing the land mm -hmm. from another. Now, of course, the starting point, uh, the basics are uh, we do have an owner, the vendor, and then we have the purchaser or the person who is interested in buying the land. Yeah. If Tumwine is to buy land from Kato, not so, yes, yes. then it literally implies that uh, there are some steps that uh, Tumwine must uh, execute mm. uh, to ensure that uh, he gets a uh, proper ownership of the land. Okay. And uh, that uh, the reality is uh, there is what we call due diligence before a person buys land that he must execute before payment for the uh, consideration that uh, would do make the vendor part the land to the uh, purchaser. Okay. Uh, like they have requested I mix in some Luganda. Uh, you need to get uh, particulars of ownership. That is the starting point. Okay. What do I mean here? What do you mean by particular? Absolutely, I can expound more on it. Particulars of ownership. Mm. That is the names of the vendor or the registered proprietor at the time of you picking interest in buying the land. Particulars of okay. ownership. Okay. Of ne block number, uh, plot number, or demo we yonge doktegera etakaliriwa. What is uh, the area where that land is situated? What is the coverage in terms of the hectares? You know, just look at the cover page, go to the next page. Find out all the details pertaining to the land. Whether there is an encumbrance on the land or if there is any caveat on the land. Okay. Get to know who lodged the caveat or the note. You know, if at all it was there, when was it removed? You know, mm -hmm. if at all it's still there, what happens? What is the status of that particular land? Those are the particulars of land ownership. And many people normally don't mind about looking into particulars of land ownership. All they rush for is see the registered proprietor. But they don't want to look at the hectare, the, the hectares. <laughs> the size or, of the, the land. The size of the land, absolutely. Mm. So that one end up bringing some friction at some point. That is step number one. Then number two, you need to carry out what you call a land search. Carry out okay. a land search, please. How do we do and how do we carry out that land search? Yeah, a land search, you basically go to the M zone. Um, of uh, that particular area <laughs> where you are bringing in hard words, the M zone and... <laughs> okay, Katugambe, <laughs> Ugena Guletaka, Mwakiso district. Oja kugenda ku offices za lands, eza Mwakiso district. Yes. Bobo genda kugula MPG, genda ku land offices, eza MPG. MPG. Bobo Limbarara, the same story, and so on and so forth. So should we say that each district has, you know, the land offices? Absolutely, yeah. Echo chikuru nyo, abantupa ino chitegera, nti... Various districts do have uh, land offices for purposes of decentralization, efficiency, and efficacy at large okay. in as far as the land-related matters are concerned. Katiboba ogena gura etaka embalara. You cannot come to the land offices of Mpiji, Chibachicha Munyo. Neither do you have to go to the land offices of Arua. You must go to that particular zone of offices. Yes. Exactly, yeah. Katu wo kolera search yeyo, jengamba. Katu wo maro kola search yeyo, of course... Katu wo kola search. Mm -hmm. 
You will be the way to go to the Zoom that go get the core your research. Absolutely, yeah. Brand office. It's a nice inquiry. You will be having a, a copy of the title, yes. and then you get to make the payment after generating the payment uh, e receipt, mm. and uh, you pay for like carrying out the land search. Above said the opportunity, we will go to plus bank charges, something like that, or ten k, and then afterwards you submit. Then you're supposed to be given a such report. When you submit to the land offices, Zimbabwe and Biezo, uh, they will give you what we call, uh, I mean, they stamp for you on the photocopy uh, to show that they have received your request for the search of the land. Mm. Which take a day. So there, afterwards, they give you like a day or two, and they give you what we call a search. You understand? Eh? The, the outcome of the search. The search letter. Search report. A search report, exactly. But one thing that people need to know is that a search report is not a guarantee. Mm. That in the event that a man ya geba kuwa de, of course, goal yomu tuwa ba li kucha pecho. But there is a disclaimer whereby the land office is not guaranteeing of any eventuality that can come up in the event of fraud or in the event of you not being the ultimate owner of the land after the purchase. Therefore, there are other things that you must do. You don't stop at the search report only. Mm. There is that disclaimer, which people must always take note of. They are always tying themselves only on the search the report. Search report. You find the name is showing Kato Tumsime, Mr. Kato Tumsime. Mm. But maybe Mr. Kato Tumsime, there is somebody who has done a fraudulent transaction to show that the names are actually for Sorry. Kato Tumsime, but the person selling is not what? It's not the real Kato Tumsime. Exactly. It happened in my area where I stay. And uh, indeed, the, there is a lady who masqueraded and did a lot of frauds on somebody's land. Mm -hmm. And by the time we intercepted it, he had already swindled lots of money from very many people. Mm -hmm. So that is very key. You do a land search. Mm -hmm. Then afterwards, you need also to do what we call a uh, opening of the boundaries okay. and engaging a supplier. What, does, what is involved in opening of boundaries? Yeah, opening of the boundaries, uh, you definitely need the service of uh, a professional and qualified uh, surveyor. Mm. Because prudence demands that uh, for one to do uh, the surveyor's work, he must be qualified. And he must okay. be very good in as far as reading coordinates are concerned. And uh, coming up with what we call a surveyor's report, mm. which uh, gives a picture of the land they're interested in buying. In terms of the acreage, Takarian Kanaritia, Diriwa, what could be the challenges on the land, uh, e cabreses and all sorts of things that could be on that particular land. So it is important to get to know that a surveyor, a jack kupimira, a query is a measurement, is a nini, is a takanga with zenkana. So okay. that at the end of the day, you buy that which is indeed the very right subject matter mm. at hand. So that is very key to get a surveyor to open boundaries and give you a surveyor's report. So opening boundaries involves you know finding out the actual size of the land. Actual size of the land, mm. location of the land. Location. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes they go ahead even to understand like the neighborhood. The neighborhood of the They land. get to understand like the historical marks on the land. Mm. There are some areas which are very challenging when you go there to do like a, a survey. Okay. Cases of like uh, this area uh, from uh, um, Kabaragala. That area, Kabaragala, that area there, yes. it is very difficult to do a survey of the plots of land there. Reason being, the old mark, stone marks were removed, replaced with the new marks, stone marks, and the people have already erected buildings, so it is challenging to find uh, the opening of the boundaries carried out in such places. However, in other areas, it is quite fine. You may find there like an old stone mark, and then you follow, you compare with the neighborhood. Mm. People who have other plots of land already earmarked, to tell exactly the size of the land that you're opening here. So it's very critical. And these days, they normally use GPS, uh, satellite based, and they are in position to read the coordinates to come up with the exact size of the land at hand here. Okay, so after doing the opening of boundaries, what else do we require? Because now we haven't reached the point of buying that same land. Absolutely. Still, all that that I'm talking about is related to due diligence. Diligence, ladies and, men, uh, ladies and gentlemen, which must, one must carry out. Now, the next step you need to do is to do what we call a physical uh, visitation at the site. You as the buyer or the potential buyer, you must do what we call a physical visitation of the, the land. Mm -hmm. You must go and you check on that particular land which they are telling you about. Many people often at times buy land without even visiting the locus. <laughs> without <laughs> even knowing where the land, is, whether the land exists or not. Absolutely. For example, there is like a time I was selling my small piece of land and I took some bank manager who happens to be a lady. I think she <laughs> was from a saloon 
and she could not even want to get out of the car. She was like, I'm from a saloon. My nails may get spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> so she couldn't even want to know the stone marks where they are. Hey. And I'm like, no. So she bought based on the trust she had in me. <laughs> and of which most, mostly it causes people problems when at the end of the day they are like, they don't know exactly where the land is. So it is partner and important mm. that you visit locus. Get to that particular place where the land is situated and also ensure that you also familiarize yourself with the, the neighborhood. Check out with the neighbors, go to the local council authorities, mm -hmm. find out the history of the land, find yeah. out who is <laughs> the exact owner, who bought from who, you know, and at the time of the sale, who is actually the rightful owner, who is in the ownership legally and in possession. Those two are very different mm -hmm. because possession brings about equitable interests. Yes. Ownership brings about legal interests, and we definitely know that all is legal interest normally outweighs the exactly. Outweighs. It supersedes, yeah. So it is very critical that people always visit Locus. Uh, yeah, Mr. when you talk Kato. about visiting Locus, I remember there was some case that was uh, very common mm. on social media. Mm. I know this lady claimed her bought land. Mm. She did not know where exactly the land was. She did not know which property was on the land. Mm. And you know, there was a forest on the same piece of land. Yeah. But they were asking the lady in cross-examination, did you actually visit the locust? The lady <laughs> was like, yes, I visited. And they were asking if she had witnessed and seen mm. the forest on the same land. She, she was saying no. She did not see anything I know. related to the land. Now, yeah. mm. Mm. we have visited the locust. Mm. We have now estimated and understood what is on that piece of land. Mm. We have done uh, the search report, we have it, for example, and we have found out from the neighbors and uh, you know the local councils who owns this piece of land. Mm -hmm. What next do we have to do? Yeah, still uh, as per the due diligence requirements, mm -hmm. a prudent would-be purchaser would in that case familiarize with the local council, that one I've already said, I don't need to repeat it, mm -hmm. and uh, inquire from the neighbors, you know, and at the end of the day also, uh, at the end of the day, mm. I beg your pardon, also uh, proceed now to check out for easements on the land. Okay. It's very important to check out for easements so on the land. So what are the easements that we are talking about? <coughs> yeah, easements are to the effect of like uh, the right, public right of way okay. in that particular land. You're going to buy like say maybe five acres of land in Obusunju. You need to find out, mm. is there any planned um, project related activities that may take place on this particular land to give uh, a public right to pass through your land, you okay. know, it, that one needs to be established, you know, so as, so that by the time you buy land, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you don't have to fall uh, prey of uh, easements that you were never aware of. So it is very critical that you get to know, mm -hmm. will there be a public road passing through that land? Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any aspects to do with like maybe public development related projects like water boreholes, things to do with the, maybe, uh, Minings and all sorts of things. So you need to know that whether there are easements or not. Okay. Easements relate to the public rights of way in your land. Then also you need to take note of like uh, as another step, mm. the aspects of NEMA, you know, uh, related activities. <laughs> NEMA could be having uh, plans for the land that you intend to buy. Often the times we've had a lot of noise. Kerere nyinji nyo on matters <laughs> pertaining to wetlands. Wetland. By the time you buy land, please, is it a wetland or it's not? Rukalu or Bateruri Rukalu. You understand? <laughs> but, but some people own land where, which has some part the portion of the, wetland. of the wetland. Exactly. The swamps. That one is understandable. However, you also need to ascertain to what extent or like what is that portion of land which is in the wetland vis a vis the one which you really see is not in the wetland. <laughs> because wetland itself has got advantages mm -hmm. and that uh, surely it's not good to always uh, uh, reclaim wetlands or mess around the land which is in the wetland because it has a lot of uh, environmental related significance. So NEMA will come into play. You mm. can even get your title and inquire from NEMA. Okay. What plans do you have for this land? Can I proceed and buy it? How can I maintain it? You know, uh, can I, because you see at the end of the day, we must be friendly to uh, wetland yeah. uh, related uh, areas. You saw that man must live in isolation, but at the end of the day, Wetlands are play a critical role in as far as the environment uh, is concerned. So NEMA may need to be uh, contacted so as to give a clearance. Of course, there are some wetlands which are superseded by events. People have built and they have reclaimed wetlands to an extent that you find. Uh, NEMA may end up giving a grant for as long as use, land is used sustainably. 
So that one is something that needs to come into our people's mind. But it is critical that before you buy land, please check out with NEMA. Also check out with the relevant authorities, like KCCA, Kampala Capital State Authority. You know, mm -hmm. the land you are buying, are they planning to make it a dumping place or not? You know, uh, things normally keep changing now and then, now and then. So you may buy land today, you part with your money or consideration, and at the end of the day, you find KCC has got other plans for it. Okay. Yes, because So I now, <coughs> having established all that, now if I ascertain and, and find out that this land actually belongs to the person I'm buying from, mm -hmm. can I now proceed to buy the same land? Yeah, absolutely. I believe uh, I have expounded more on all those steps that are to be carried out in interest of due diligence. Yes. And that uh, once one is comfortable with them, then at the end of the day, you can uh, now draft what we call uh, a sale agreement or land sale agreement, and uh, it should be having quite uh, good provisions mm. which protects the interest of the buyer. Of the buyer. You understand? Eh? Exactly. Because you see, once you do a contract, you must ensure that uh, there are five elements which are always uh, embedded in that particular contract. Okay. The subject matter will spell it out. The legal relationship must, uh, that must be always upheld. Um, the consideration or the amount of money that you're parting with, the consent of uh, the parties, the willing buy and willing seller basis, as well as uh, the capacity to contract, the capacity to contract. Okay. It's very key, exactly. Yeah. Right. So you go ahead and you purchase the land. All right. Okay. Now I hope council has been able to establish and explain to the viewers out there what you need to buy. And we started with land that is registered or where the seller has a land title. It is clear. That is the due diligence one and each of us should have and actually should do before buying that piece of land. And remember, this is our show, Take Archi, airing live on Alternative Uganda and TikTok TV Facebook pages. We later on upload our video on our YouTube channel, the Alternative Uganda. Follow, like, comment, and, you know, press the notification button so that you can be able to always follow us, follow the different discussions, follow the different guests and their views and be able to learn something new on each and every day. Council, now that was a land that has a land title. Mm. But I want to, to take you to a library example where people own land and <coughs> that land is not registered. Like you talked about, uh, for example, the customary land where people have no land titles. The person owns land, for example, the Takayari Sikira Kuvakuchitawe, Panae, Aina interest. So what advice are you giving the buyer and what is requi required from the buyer? Before buying that land, Tirina Chapa. Nayona Alimu Kuritunda. Which due diligence does that person need to do? Yeah, thank you for that uh, question, uh Council Kato. Mm. Yeah, Kato Oya Taina Chapanga Tunde Takarye. Mm. Chikulu nyo o kuraba anti oya yagalo ligura. You do due diligence as yes. well. Because we do understand what you have to do with the title. You have to take care of it. You have to protect it. Absolutely. But uh, one thing that needs to be noted is that you uh, have to do due diligence or get them by LOC, local council, or the leadership of that particular area. They get to know that you have to do with the title. 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 So you establishing that you know what you know about your So that at the end of the day, when we get local in Dagano, we pay no cost. We have no money. We have no goal. We eat our. We take guarantee. We don't take any waste. We have plenty. We come with water. No. We have come with water. We have to take care of our people. 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 We have to Exactly. Absolutely, that's the key due diligence that is required. At a nature of Tegere, Anya possession area Taka, or also Sango Amataka go Garikonga Kayumba, Anya Kaviram, Toga Guretaka, Atebo Genok Sango, Sanga Toria Simbako Damakanda. So Cheta Gisa or Tegere Anya Liko. Mm. Mm. Now, council, different sections of the RTA, mm. the Registration of Titles Act, mm. uh, specifically, I should point out sections like 64, talks about the indivisibility of the title. If mm. a person is holding a land title, mm. then that title is indivisible. Mm. But we have had instances where a person who 
has the title on mm. the land. Mm. And, but on the same land, we have the people who we call the Vivanja holders. How does the law protect the Vivanja holders? On the land where the owner, the initial owner, has a title, mm. how does the law protect them? Are, are yeah. they actually protected under the law? Yeah, thank you. Or that, uh, that is a very nice one. And it's good you're bringing the indivisibility of, of the, the title. title. And they literally, in the layman's language, implying that that one who owns the title, who has the title, who is registered on the title, mm. is the owner of the land. Yes. And of course, I would relate it with uh, Section uh, 59 of Registration of the Titles Act, uh, Cup 230, which is to the effect of a person holding the title, registered on the title as a, a proprietor, is conclusive evidence is enough dead? that is the proprietor of the what? Of, of the land. The land. <coughs> what that one implies is that uh, in the visibility of course uh, with this origin having come from the Torren system, you know, mm -hmm. under Sir Robert Torrens uh, of Australia, it was realized that uh, all documents must always be registered mm. to the effect that uh, the person <coughs> claiming to be the proprietor must be registered, must on, be registered on the same on the, line. Exactly. Yeah. So now what happens ideally is that uh, it vests you with the legal interests mm -hmm. because you are the owner of the land, you are the proprietor. Yes. However, the person that you're talking about, who is seated there as a Chivanja owner, does, d would be having what we call equitable interests. Mm. Yeah. But still, you realize that uh, in the event of anything, the person who has equitable interests must come and uh, agree with the person who has the legal interest. The legal interest. Because legal interests will always proceed. <coughs> equitable interests. However, equitable interests also, those people have their own okay, rights, you know, the other. You cannot just test him. Away, uh, they just protected like that. under the rules as well? Yes, they are protected and uh, of course there is what we call like adverse possession of land. Mm -hmm. Somebody has been on your land uh, for over 12 years and you've not done anything on it. You cannot easily come and uh, chase him away or mm -hmm. chase her away. Okay. So ultimately at the end of the day it would state that uh, you get to the round table and uh, perhaps you give him a chance of Okwegura. Over that is the common used word. Exactly, Okwegura. Njagala Okwegura over uh, you compensate him and he leaves your land. You understand, eh? and that those people at the end of the day have done some developments also on the land, on the land. exactly. Yeah. So it is very pertinent to know that uh, each person has got their protection, but that the one who owns legal interest must always pick interest in checking on their lands, often at times, so that they don't find squatters, they don't find uh, any kind of uh, <laughs> trespasses on the land which can cause them problems okay. at the end of the day. Because, like, uh, adverse possession really, 12 years and it's coming to you, know, but you, you've not gone to claim or you've not raised the cause of action, <laughs> then at the end of the day, <laughs> then you, you, it all. you forfeit the land, absolutely. Yeah. It is very, very key. Okay. Yeah. So, in the visibility of the land, it is the effect of ownership based on the registration uh, of the title in your names mm. as conclusive evidence per section 59 that indeed you are the rightful owner of the land. And of course, if I'm to emphasize, I would relate it with the section 54 of the Registration of the Titles Act, uh, Cap 230, which is to the effect that documents are not effectual. Documents can never be effectual unless the registration, the has, registration been, has been taken. Uh, exactly, or effected. And it is well attested in the case of uh, uh, what? Um, um, there is a case, I just skipped the part. Eh? Ndigejerawa, it's actually Ndigejerawa. <laughs> case of Ndigejerawa yeah. versus Kizito and Kubura Moana, <laughs> whereby the Kizito sold land to uh, Kubura Moana and Kubura Moana did not uh, register the mm. title in his names. Then uh, Kizito again sold the land to Ndigejerawa so after like four or five days, exactly. <laughs> so Kizito sold land to the two people, but none of them effected a the registration, registration there and then. You know? And upon presenting the documents uh, of uh, Ndigejerawa, the registrar, the registrar of titles refused because uh, the documents were not in order. And uh, when the case was brought before court, uh, court held that uh, you cannot have registration of documents which are not registrable. In other words, there were quite things that were lacking on yes. those particular documents. Okay. And of course, the ownership <coughs> as per the legal uh, interest could not be apportioned, save for uh, deciding on who is to take damages and uh, for specific performance for the other uh, party. Okay. So it is very critical that documents must be effectually uh, registered here. Mm. Okay, you. that is an insight. And mm. quite an insightful discussion today here, Council mm. Wills. Mm. There is a different issue I want you to talk about. Mm. You see, in, 
in uh, occupancies, mm. the different occupancy systems that we have in Uganda. I will talk about the joint tenancy mm, and the tenancies in common. Mm. We have had issues and instances. For example, I will talk from a perspective of the viewer out there. I will give an example and then you can base on that to give the explanation maybe so that people can understand what we are actually talking about. We own <coughs> land jointly. Mm. And then these other people own land in common. Mm. I want you to differentiate and maybe give an insightful meaning on what means when somebody comes and tells you that this land is owned jointly mm -hmm. and this land is owned in common. In common yeah. okay. Yes, you give us the differences and then... Yeah, thank you. Those are very critical and important principles in land ownership in Uganda. Mm. Joint tenancy and tenancy, tenancy in, common, in common. That the viewers must take note of. Joint tenancy is to the effect of uh, owning land as individuals, you could be five individuals or four individuals, whatever the number, mm. and that uh, you have <coughs> equal shares in that particular land. Okay. And that there is no one who has more shares than the other. In other words, you are all at equal, that is joint tenancy. Mm. And that uh, there are e is what we call a right of survivorship with joint tenancy. Joint tenancy. Quite a number of units, uh, unit of possession, unit of time. But the key one is, unit of time is because uh, you, you possess the land at the same time and that you all have the possession. And that the critical one is that one of the right of survivorship in joint tenancy, okay. which the viewers must know. Must know. Impliedly, if you own land, it's Minetaka, Muriko Avant Vatano, on the Kuchapa, as registered proprietors or owners. Okay. It means you are owning that land in equal rights, equal measures. Then it means the right of survivorship applies. Those are the ones who own the land. You understand? Until the very last person uh, dies off. You understand? So otherwise, uh, five people, one dies off, then it means the other four will take the possession of the land. So can the, the beneficiaries of this person, the, deceased, the one the deceased, get also a portion of no, the same land? No, not with joint tenancy. Mm. That one now comes in with what we call tenancy in common. In common. So exactly. in joint tenancy, if I die, yes. my siblings and my beneficiaries cannot benefit from the What happens is those ones who are registered on the title with you, are the ones who take over the land. Okay. There is a right of survivorship with joint tenancy. Joint tenancy. That's what the viewers need to know. The one who survives takes is the, the one rest of the exactly. Share. The one who survives takes over automatically. And you don't need by the letters of administration because the and law presumes tenancy. exactly. And even if there is registration that has happened on the land, yes. but it is not showing the distinctions in terms of the shares of ownership. The law presumes joint tenancy takes over. So it is very critical that people get to know what joint tenancy means and what, common what tenancy, tenancy in common, common means. means. Tenancy in common is a scenario whereby now you <coughs> spell out the distinct shares of each person. We could be two people owning the land and you say to Mwine Wills, you own 30% of this acre of land and the council cattle. Uh, you own 70% 70%. of this acre of land. That is tenancy in common. So it must be clearly stated. Absolutely, it must be stated. And that in the event of one's demise, God forbid, okay. then it means that my children, the, survivor. the survivors, exactly, will take over my interest. Okay. That is what we mean by tenancy in common. Tenancy in common. As opposed to joint tenancy, where there is right of survivorship. Right of survivorship. Exactly. But those two principles confuse people to an extent like... Uh, you know, they will always be haggling left, right, and center. Not the knowing uh, where they fall and maybe what happens Absolutely. after somebody dies in mm. joint tenancy. Mm. Do we need letters of administration and the sort of? Absolutely. No, with joint tenancy, the reality is you don't need because there is right of survivorship. Remember, you have four people, one has passed on. Therefore, what means is that the other three automatically are take over. So you don't need even the letter. The letter of administration is normally needed in instances where, uh, of course, uh, the deceased is the one who was registered on the title. On the title. Exactly. So now that title must be changed, the names of the administrator, and then the beneficiaries are given their own portion. So the rights so automatically goes to the to survivors. The, exactly, to the survivors. And that's how the, the person who has died and their beneficiaries 
lose it. They lose out, yeah. So <laughs> people must always go for <laughs> maybe <laughs> tenants in common, yeah. So that uh, the, so the that beneficiaries they can be beneficiaries. Absolutely. In the case of Dima is of one of the people. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. Now council wills mm -hmm. uh, on, 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 a, on a different note, <coughs> if I may ask and uh, for example, I want us to go back a little. Mm. Somebody who has bought land, for example, it is he bought it from a Chivanja holder. Mm. And this person wants to regularize his interests on the land. Mm. He wants to register the same land mm. and own a title. Mm. Is there a possibility that that person can access and be able to get a land title? Or he has to keep his interest as a Chivanja holder as well? No, absolutely. A person who is a Chivanja holder, if they so wish, can get legal interest. Yes. But the starting point, of course, is to get to know who owns the land legally. Mm. And in that case, the Chivanja holder will have to approach the owner of the land okay. uh, legally. The person is the title. Title is very, very key. And by the way, for your information, a person cannot claim to be a Chivanja holder <laughs> owner at, this, at the same time uh, to be owning, to be a, owning title. a title. Yeah, you are either one. You can either be hot or cold. You, you understand? <laughs> so that is something that people must know. So what happens? The Chivanja holder will approach the person with the legal interest or with the title and mm. then uh, uh, engage with that particular person. They get to agree on uh, the portion of the land. The other party with the title <laughs> is willing to part with uh, for whatever consideration, you know. Mm. And then afterwards, uh, the person will allow to grant him that portion which he uh, uh, is comfortable with. And of course, they would sign what we call like uh, the mutation form. So are the what are the procedures? The procedure is to the effect of now still bring in the surveyor. Okay. Open the boundary, get to know the Kibanja holders, the portion of land. of land. And then afterwards, get to the owner legally of mm. the land. Mm. and they ascertain the area which they agree okay. to pass on to the Kiwanja owner. And then afterwards, they come up with uh, the mutation forms, the surveyor's report will be made, uh, the mutation form will be signed, and then I proceed to engage with uh, staff surveyors at different land offices, mm. you know, who will uh, also send in their field officers to check out the demarcations of the land, and uh, when they are comfortable, they proceed with uh, uh, what we call uh, coming up with... Uh, uh, the, the deeds, of course, uh, deeds are worked upon by the cartographers in those particular land offices mm. upon uh, payment of uh, some money involved okay. in the bank and presentation of the paperwork mm. at uh, the various district uh, offices. And then afterwards, uh, titles, the mother title will have to be, uh, will have to be, will have to be split okay. by the portion of land that you are passing on to the other party. Mm. And then there afterwards, uh, the new title will be generated for the one who was originally a Chivanja owner and now is getting the legal interest in the land. In the land. Exactly. Under the registration of the Titles Act, a uh, cap 20, uh, 230. Mm -hmm. okay. So that is very key to take note of. We Chivanja, I use Okuba, Katinani Nitaka Yini. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Quarter Ganane, Nani Nitaka, Mobulunji. Mukiriza Ganye, Mufne Saveya, Saveya opening boundaries, and mm. uh, he or she demarcates the land that actually is agreeable to the one who owns uh, the land legally, and then afterwards, mutation forms will be signed. The file gets uh, forwarded to the district staff surveyor of various land offices, okay. and then afterwards, the cartographer will do the needful, the deed prints will be issued, and then the title will also be uh, issued accordingly. Okay, thank you so much, Council mm. Wills. Mm. Now so, we talk about the issue of titles. We mm. have had issues where mm. people don't know, uh, you know, don't differentiate between a, a fake title mm. and, and uh, the original title or a title that is a clear one and mm. a good one from the ministry and the mm. land offices. Mm. In, in simple terms, if a person is given a land title, mm. what are the basics that they should first look for on the same title to identify its authenticity? Yeah, that's true. Uh, thank you, Kanso That mm. is a very important uh, question that he poses, <coughs> mm. which uh, listeners of viewers must take note of. Uh, Personally, there is a time I was at uh, NASA, we some business cards. Yes. And ideally what happened, there is a gentleman who came with a flash. Okay. They were printing the titles. 
titles <laughs> pia ngola bila ngaba sprinting yes me i was just <laughs> somebody was just working on my business cards eh? business cards okay. and somebody here came with a flash and they were printing for him uh, titles ngazona zira bikira dalanti pia exactly those are frauds of course mm. now what happens ideally we know kutegera basebe ne wanya nti fraud uh, is such a menace in society and uh, that uh, yes much as the police is there to curb the crime the reality is the fraud stars keep increasing kate chikule cha manye nyo bofune cha pecho o ino kuchira abantu dala dala chitufu echo kusokere wako always look at the cover page okay exactly look at page the wording page is okay yo mm. get to ascertain if there is a seal a seal is very important on the title okay. a seal exactly a, a important plus the wordings you know that are on the cover page get to let akaliwa block a cheap lot number chi okay. you know eh, then we turning uh, eh, eh, nani the very second page you need to look at the details of the title who is the proprietor what's the area of the coverage where is the land found you know what are the easements you know what are the encumbrances there you know where is there an instrument number it is very important instrument number nkuru nyo you know kuragant bajingza on such and such a date and even the time is indicated then you get also to look at the signature of the registrar of titles that signed exactly abantu batira kufojinga signatures but at least bobola kwa kuli zobo si gweri signature weri maybe you could be used to like uh, even the registrar's signatures that uh, are normally on the genuine titles never na sikuli baba mba forjinga so you need to go ahead and do searches that's very critical i to have a title nyinginga zili forge exactly title zo nyinji zili forge ne gambi mwana ya printing a title zinga mulaba and they was like what is this exactly eh? titles are supposed to come from zono offices but this is the guy is printing from kati do zola boy oyere afumba mtu egwe you know then you need also to ascertain like uh, uh, instrument number joge deko obudde we ba ingiza that instrument number entry. yes the entry then you look at the uh, signature of the of the of the registrar you look at like uh, the names of the proprietor mm -hmm. uh, you know with proprietary interests then you look at the easements you look at the caveats which are there encumbrances which are there everything on the title and also tell them that if i said you my land yes please then my name on the title is cancelled absolutely the name gets cancelled signed against signed against it gets and then cancelled then they make a new entry absolutely they make a new entry to justify that indeed now this is the rightful new proprietor of the land okay. all those things are there so they were collected that paper they were using a pen then no gamba ah to baba kuba bukubi exactly yeah Mm -hmm. Okay that is council is trying to explain to us mm -hmm. and we have had these different types of titles as well and you know most people normally use the uh, there is a duplicate certificate of title and there is this one uh, I'm forgetting its name the white page live around the white page there is a uh, when you lose your duplicate certificate of title yes. you are given a special certificate very of title true, very and that's true. where the problem comes in mm -hmm. so under what circumstances can a person who owns an authentic title mm. get uh, a special, a special title, title. title? That's true. Because most, of, most of the people are confused. This mm. one brings a special certificate of title and so different, uh, a few people know mm. what and under what circumstances can one get a special certificate That is title. true. Thank you. Maybe permit me also to go a little bit back. Yes. There is now a, a, a code, it's a, an electronic kind of a code, which is now coming on the new titles. Okay. Exactly. Especially these new titles. But of titles. course, not forgetting that there are quite a number of titles which are of old times, which may not have those provisions. But the but new ones... They are ones, still authentic. Exactly. Valid. They are still authentic and valid. But for now, there is that particular code. Eh? you know which uh, is uh, electronic and they can easily be detected more so uh, pertaining to matters of uh, barcode and so on kate chocho buziza echa somebody has got a duplicate title na yenga ebuze they can give him what you call a special title by the way people normally confuse echa pa choina mu nyumba ye cheche nyumba yo we talk about it it's not the original title the original title is referred to as the white page it stays at the land offices, the land offices. Yeah, people must know but uh, the one that you are having is the duplicate you understand mm. what that implies is that it signifies the exact entries as those ones which are on on the white page exactly at ejuke lantineri mland ze cha page ne wechibola they have already captured all those titles in the system, the system electronically. electronically they've already scanned exactly 
They've already scanned all the documentation pertaining to that particular title in the system. So it's much cool in your way until right now, I think things have been well automated uh, for betterment of risk management. Yes. Because at the end of the day, if you lose your title, then they'll go pick out the file. If they can't get the file, they check on the system what is there. Okay. So that is something that is very important here. Now, HBOZO Chobuzi is whereby under what instances can you get a special title? It is to the effect of quite a number of circumstances. For example, if your duplicate title becomes obliterated, you understand? What do you mean by obliterated? Obliterated no. means like a chapa choina chikadi enyo. Techa so meka. Techa so meka. Techa so meka. Enyo You know, sigi techa so ajira bulunji noji tegera. Maybe a mazigachi wachi waka mazi accidentally. You know, maybe mm -hmm. there could have been a flood kind of. Uh, Unwarranted aspect in your homestead uh, because of heavy down power okay. and the nature known as a via pavio or bill treated, meaning that uh, teach us on the basically. Mm. So, that one, what that is, implies is that you can always apply to the register of titles okay. for a special uh, certificate, exactly. Then, instances of like the loss of the duplicate mm. uh, title that one can also be there, <laughs> whereby Boba also the chapacho you can always proceed to apply for uh, a special certificate of title from uh, the the registrar of titles and the, the consideration will be to the effect of course you first gazette uh, you first report to the police gazette uh, f for about 30 days and then you make appropriate payments and then the special title will be will be issued you know then uh, things to do with like theft but be a chapa exactly. duplicate, certificate, duplicate of certificate of title but be you can end up uh, reporting to police also and follow the procedure of getting the special title. So special title yebao, ate ba jiteka komu red special title to show that indeed there is a title already existing na yenga e hili ya vuze katitumufuni de eno to be the one that he or she uh, uses. Mm. So it is very critical that people get to know it here. So, that pe mm. so people out there, our viewers out there who are trying to watch and follow, inform the colleagues mm. who are interested in buying land. Mm. I have had so many instances where people buy land following the special certificate of title and they have not followed out to find out under what circumstances that special certificate of title was given to the person owning or purporting to be the owner of the land. So at least council has been able to take us through the different processes of how one can get a special certificate of title, how the special certificate of title looks like, and how that duplicate certificate of title that you own at your home that you are keeping in your car or wherever you are keeping it from the considerations you must look for to make it and make sure that that certificate of title is authentic and valid. Now, Council, uh, let me try to look if you have uh, questions here. I see people who are appreciating for the show. We have Ediga here. We have Julius Hilk uh, from Wemiaga, Zimbabwe. Thank you for watching. Yusuf Chitakule, keep up the good work, and Jamie Pro. I think we don't have questions for now, and mm. I think uh, the show has been so interesting. Now we are mm. almost coming to to the close of our show today, mm. and I will give you uh, about three minutes mm. to have something special that you feel maybe you could have left and tackled, and you mm. want our viewers to know, especially mm. on the topic we are dealing with. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Kato, Council Kato. Uh, Basically, what I can say is uh, that uh, to the viewers, of course, I appreciate your, uh, your, your time in as far as watching us is concerned. Mm. Yeah, the key thing that I would want to emphasize in as far as uh, land-related matters are concerned is, of course, uh, doing due diligence whenever you're going to buy land. Mm. Plus, uh, use land in the good way and for the benefit of you as an individual, your homestead, and the, uh, the society at large. And of course, uh, pertinent that uh, I did not mention earlier, which I need to emphasize, is that uh, you need to take provision uh, note of uh, Section 38A uh, of uh, the Land Act as amended, which mm. is to the effect of uh, a need to have a spousal consent okay. in the event that you who is selling land, you are going to dispose of to a buyer. Mm. So that one requires that uh, you must have a spousal consent. It is part of the due diligence that has to be done. There is a need for you to get consent from a spouse. Number 
the Yaland Act, uh, Cap 227, as amended, which is to the effect of uh, spousal consent is needed. Olinga agenda kutunza etakari. Bwawa ino mchara wo msajja. Because, and that family land is looked at as that land where the family is speaking uh, sustenance. Okay. Sustenance is very critical. So you cannot sell off minus consulting or getting consent of the spouse or the dependents of mature age. Mm. That is 18 and above. So it's very critical. The dependents or children who are of mature age, it's very important that you get the consent of those particular persons. Mm. Spousal consent is critical. So it is one of the due diligence aspects that I had missed out, but I think it's now fine that I bring it up it to speed. Yeah. And case law has already <laughs> decided, ladies and gentlemen, you as the mortgager to get a loan. Mm. But at the end of the day, the bank who is a mortgagee does not get spousal consent. Then that then loan becomes becomes a nullity <laughs> from the onset. Well, because it lacks consent. Absolutely. Only. There is a lot of case law, a lot of case law uh, which uh, expounds more on it that you need to have a spousal consent because that's where they are picking their livelihood from. Mm. It's a case of a crawl. Exactly. It expounds more on it. It's about so, sustenance. Sustenance of the, of the family. Where do they pick their livelihood? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it takes us to the very interesting aspect of uh, what a marital property. <laughs> but maybe that one will reserve it for that one another will be discussion. discussion for yes, exactly. <laughs> Another discussion for another day. You understand? Yeah. So that is very critical for people to know. Mm -hmm. So due diligence is important. And above all, the buyers must always know that courts have expounded on the aspect of land not being vegetables when you're going to buy land. <laughs> so it requires that surely you must do all searches and checks and balances okay. to ensure that what you're buying is uh, appropriate and has no uh, problems at all. Of course, uh, to the viewers and uh, most so the sellers, they need to understand, the vendors, they need to understand that fraud is such a, a grotesque monster that uh, courts will always hold it whenever it tries to rear its head. Okay. So, a chit a fraud over in Uganda, but it is a fraud. Or college, a fraud. Or a Exactly, thank you. Chivinyo. And that fraud goes always to the bone marrow of any agreement or any transaction. Bwaba wakule takango manitu walimu fraud. Then tegea nanti yi takali jako lachi. Jako Exactly. Well, there was actual or constructive notice. Mm. That is something that people need to know. And that fraud is always imputed on the transferee. Transfer. You understand? And that fraud will always be uh, um, investigated, particularly, you understand? Mm. And uh, that uh, the way least it's not beyond reasonable doubt, the... the, the the, the yardstick will always be above uh, balance of probabilities. Okay. You understand? So people must take note of it, that a fraud is such a, a bad monster which can vitiate any contract in the land, in the land transaction. Right. So it's cool your people get to understand appropriately. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Wills, for your interaction and your time. Thank you for honoring our invitation and thank you for that educative message to our viewers out there. And our viewers should actually know that however much you have talked about the invisibility <coughs> of the land title, the person who owns the title has the legal rights over that piece of land. But then there are exceptions. Mm -hmm. That the process or the registration of your name on the same land title included bits of fraud, constructive, punitive, and the rest that, council, that land title may end up being actually cancelled and that's how you rose up on the same land and your ownership will go back to zero so as you also deal with clients uh, the lawyers themselves dealing with clients due diligence is important people who don't want to use lawyers you also make sure and uh, at least you have information about how due diligence is done and what is required in due diligence so that before you buy any piece of land you actually find out how that land came to the owner or the person who is selling the same piece of land to you so that you can be able to buy a piece of land that is clean and you know that has no encumbrances over it and that's how best we can fight this problem of land grabbers the fraudsters who are actually 
more involved in land and we avoid unnecessary litigation in courts of law on things that could have been resolved and avoided from the beginning. <coughs> And uh, I shall see you next Tuesday on the same show as we get a different host to talk about different issues. Issues we talk about are issues that are of an interest to the community, to the people, and in our day-to-day -day life. This has been our show, Tekachi. See you next Tuesday. Thank you, Council Wills. Uh, we shall be able to call you for some other time and actually hold our invitation and come back to talk to our viewers. Thank uh, you. All the people I've worked with, thank you for the good work. See you next Tuesday and have a lovely afternoon. I'm Kato Tumisime. Thank you. The Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues, real talk.